decentralization. <sighs> Hi, so um, I, I wanted to make a follow-up video, not as an I told you so, but because I actually I learned a bunch of new stuff um, in the process of going back and forth, and, and one of the things is really cool and it was worth sharing. So, um, context. Cold Fusion made a video with that like hundreds of thousands of people watched that had a large misconception about quantum entanglement, and his video implies that uh, light can, excuse me, that information can travel faster than light because of quantum entanglement, or he calls it quantum teleportation of a state. That's wrong. That's not true. I made a whole video about it. Um, and then we went back and forth on Twitter for a little while, and I... Uh, some of his objections like got in my head and I was like oh maybe he's right about this maybe he's right about this so I started trying to design like systems in which um, he could be right uh, classical communication could maybe which was, was agreed to be necessary it was like maybe you could like communicate in advance and then you could take um, the statistical uh, noise that I said was the main problem and you could use like denoising algorithms that currently exist in computer science and then you can do uh and then you could do that and you could use it and it, it's wrong you cannot you cannot do that um i brought this up to another expert um so far i've checked in with four experts a phd student two phds and another phd and all of them have said yeah no that's a total misconception um and uh wow so why am i making this video it's not just that it's not just that i told you there's a really cool thing that i learned that i wanted to share with you um it functions as another proof that's actually like conceptually interesting enough that it's like worth talking about. So, um, Tim Maudlin in this book, uh, which you can't see here. There we go. Quantum non-locality and relativity makes a case against using entangled states as a way of transmitting information because using special relativity and it's really quick and don't be scared if you've never heard of special relativity uh, or if you don't know how it works there's a couple of concepts that like um we're gonna do just really fast okay so first before we open the special relativity box um in order for faster than light information transfer to occur in the quantum entanglement scheme, which one, it doesn't, it's a, it can occur, but if it were to occur, you'd have to have one person measure the uh, entangled state first. Okay. And the way that that person chose to measure the entangled state would then cause someone else on the other side of the universe, arbitrarily far away, China just broke the distance record far away, um, to see that, oh, I've, I've monkeyed around with the system over here, I've changed the polarization or whatever it happens to be. And um, if they were to do that, then one person would measure first and the other person would sort of somehow see after what uh, had happened. The proof that this can't be, this can't be done is, is interesting because if you lean on special relativity, the idea that things that are very far away in the universe, one happens first and the other happens second, that idea is actually breaks down in special relativity. It's called relativity of simultaneity. Things order in the universe, things that appear to be instantaneously simultaneous to one person, they aren't to another person in the universe. And things that it's one first and then the other, there are, there are frames of reference in the universe that are as legitimate as ours or as the people in the original experiment that we've contrived. We're actually one person measures first and the other person measures second it's actually flipped where the other one person measures first and the other person measures second so the idea that if you have distances that are these this great that you could be having meaningful faster than light communication that one person would be able to measure first actually breaks down completely um if you are familiar with special relativity that should be enough for you to be like oh sick that's cool that functions as a proof that you can't have faster than light information transfer for space-like separated um, systems. However, if you're not familiar with any of the words that I just said, I don't wanna leave you hanging. Um, and I wanna just give you a very quick hand weighty explanation for why that is the case. So here's how it breaks down. In special relativity. I don't, I, don't, ugh, I want it to be a short video, so I don't wanna go into like super, super too many details. I'm gonna use a hand wavy example. The hand wavy example is this. In the movie Interstellar, they go get on a spaceship and they go super fast. And when they're going super fast, time travels at a different rate for them than it does for people on Earth. Um, that's actually true. That occurs. And this is what Einstein wrote about um, and, and predicted. And we've now verified experimentally. If you're moving faster, 
the rates of passage of time for you are different than the rates of passage of time for other people. Now, many other YouTubers have made much better planned and better explained videos than these. So I would refer you if you're if, you, if that's not enough, if you don't want to take my word for it, which you shouldn't go check out a video about the light clock, like maybe minute physics has one, I'll link one below. Um, but the takeaway is that your um, if you're moving faster, the rate of passage of time changes for you. Now, if you follow that logic, you can actually see that this will break down the concept of the temporal ordering of certain events because if an event took is is five seconds from one person's future but it's 10 seconds from another person's future and then we squish or, or bend those time intervals because of relative velocities between those people then things don't actually have to occur in the same order for all legitimate observers of the universe legitimate frames of reference of the universe um don't take my word for that. Go look, go look that up if you want. Um, it's, but it's it's pretty well established. So um, this is referred to as the relativity of simultaneity. So why does this matter to the uh, entanglement video that uh, that uh, Togogo made? Okay, the reason it's relevant is because, like we said before, for a person to prove for, to meaningfully use entanglement to communicate from one spot to the other, person A, Alice or whatever, would have to turn the filter or do something to one side make the measurement first and then bob on the other side would have to make the measurement second and then infer from the second measurement what had happened first but the problem is these people are so far apart and we want them to be far apart for this for, to be meaningful at all they're so far apart that the temporal ordering of the events can be squished. It can be flipped depending on which observer is there. So maybe one of maybe the both of them see that one happened first, but that's actually not objectively the case. There are other frames of reference that are just as legitimate in which like those events are flipped. So the concept of measuring first breaks down at the great enough distances that this would be a meaningful technology in the first place. So. Um, Okay, if you're interested for more of those details, check out uh, check it out in non-locality and relativity. I'll throw an Amazon link below. Um, but I thought that was cool. So the last video we, we we talked about like from the perspective of quantum mechanics, why faster than light transfer or information transfer is not a thing. Um, and check that one video out if you're interested. But then now in this video we can say, oh, actually from the perspective of special relativity, it's also it's also meaningless to say that information could travel faster than light. Okay. Cool. Now, before you go, I'm going to say one other thing, which is there. I am reading about warp drives, and those are those are legitimate solutions to um, the Einstein's field equation in general relativity, as far as I can tell. I'm not an expert in that area yet, and so I don't know. Um, but I, that's that throws a whole monkey wrench in this analysis. That's completely not related to what's going on in the entanglement case. But I personally do not know if you have a warp drive that is causing a pocket of space to move relative to another pocket of space faster than light what happens to the information that's there can that be moving faster than light it's not because it's not moving faster than light relative to the space that it's in but the space relative to the other space is which apparently is possible i don't understand any of that so that's a topic that i'm gonna try and learn about and if i do i'll let you guys know all right thanks for watching um if you're new to this channel uh, I, I make videos about philosophy of physics and bioethics and science and whatever it is that I happen to be reading right now I'm reading um, why uh, it's immoral to have children all right have a good night see you in the next one bye